Hi there. My name is Sean Thorson, owner of Thorson Associates Workshop, and if you've been following me in any of my build projects for the last 10 or 15 years, you've probably heard me mention at least once or twice Lopez the Robot Whittler. That's the first of my four Carverite CNC machines that I've been using for making everything from vacuum forming bucks to mold masters, um, building things for film and TV and household, you know, regular home improvement projects, and anything and everything in between. Um, so after the last decade and a half worth of using these machines and bragging about them, uh, the folks at Carverite decided to send me their new model, which they call the Raven. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and pull this thing out of the box and put it through its paces, and we'll tell you what you think of it. So step one, of course, is to find the right knife. This is not the right knife. Instead, we're going to use one of these little nifty guys. But not this way. We use it this way so we don't damage the content. as we do our slicing. Ooh. Oh, off. Cool. All right, so we're gonna save all the packing material. It's unlikely event we need to do any repairs. All that's gotta go with it so that it can get back to the factory undamaged. Well, that's nifty. All right, so first improvement on the originals, this was actually a flex shaft that ran the cutting head. On this one, it's just power and data. Cool. Anything else we care about? Do not eat. Cool. So we got us one of these. <gasps> Gum. And we got us one of these. Dearest valued customer, we hope this letter finds you well and filled with excitement as you finally received your long-awaited Raven CNC machine. Cool. All right, quick start guide. We'll get to that. Power. More power. And the magic cutter. Cool. And we got us a useful box full of stuff. Melt. All right, all right, we've got this little widget, which I'm sure will make sense soon. We've got more little widgets, one USB stick, one more USB stick with lights. Cool. Screwdriver cutting bit. All right. Cool, cool, cool. And then they also sent me you know, it looks like one of the sanding mops, which I never got for my other machines. And this one is Sign Maker's Bit Set. Cool. Alright, so we got V bits and keyhole bits and Cutting bits and carving bits and everything you could ever want. Next up, the quick starting. All right. All right, you are good to go whenever you are ready. Uh, what am I doing at this point? Oh, look, they got stickers. Uh, now the quick start. Oh, but they got stickers. <laughs> I'll add this in. <laughs> this can be part of the blooper reel if you want it to be. So that's everything that's in the box. We've uh, gone through, pulled it all apart, done a quick assembly, got the beginning of what this thing's gonna look like when it's up and running. So now it's time to go ahead and build a stand for it so I can set it up in this room where I keep all of my noisy, dusty machines. Um, and uh, yeah, so 
Still enjoying the new CNC machine smell. And now uh, let's go ahead and put together a file and figure out what we're gonna do with this thing. And I gotta figure out where to put these stickers. Oops, that's my password. So our first project with the Carverite Raven CNC machine is this little cathedral window which we imported in STL format into the Designer 5 software. Then we fed it to the machine and let it go ahead and carve it out. So at this point, we've put the Carverite Raven CNC machine through its first carving project and we've got ourselves this thing, um, which is pretty straightforward. It's gonna end up being the piece of set dressing that we'll use for a project we've got coming up here. And it's all pretty wonderful. We can cut the tabs off of it and then snap off all the waste material. And pretty quickly, all the parts that we don't need, we can just throw away once everything's done. Now, this guy, is gonna end up getting hard-coded and painted and dressed up quite a bit before it's finished finished. But this is part one for the piece that we need. We're actually gonna need four exact copies of these. And the beauty of this is I can just go back in and push go and run another copy using another piece of foam insulation and count on them being pretty much the same shape each time one of these things comes up. So that's great. So uh, now that I've had a chance to actually use the machine, one of the parts that's, uh, you know, really great. It's basically because I'm very familiar with the carve rights that we've been using for the last, you know, decade and change. Um, you know, a lot of it is very familiar to me. Uh, if you're not someone who's particularly computer savvy or tech savvy, the beauty of it is, you know, it's pretty low barrier to entry with the carve right suite of products. Um, you know, the software is organic and, you know, does a pretty good job of being intuitive. You spend a few minutes poking at it and pushing buttons and seeing what, what's what, and you can figure it out pretty quickly. You don't need to be, you know, a graphic artist or have a CAD design background or anything like that in order to be able to import files, move things around, arrange things on the board, and decide how to go ahead and get things set up for carving. Um, so that's all the, the plus sides. Uh, it's got a very small footprint, so you don't need a lot of space in your shop to set up this machine. You know, it's got a little bit wider cutting area than the original carve rights, so you get another inch or so worth of material in the, the y-axis. Um, the x-axis is still notionally unlimited, but for some reason they've got it listed as 12 feet. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's a software limitation, but I'll never need to cut anything more than four feet, so I won't find out. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's... Um, easier to set up for, in this case, I was using a two inch deep carving bit. So didn't have to make this out of multiple slices, which is pretty nice. Downsides, um, they used to have a little brass tracking roller that would slip and their solution to that was the, uh, you know, little um, toothed gear and a piece of, you know, belt that has matching teeth that has to be taped to the bottom of the workpiece. Um, you know, that tape, being a consumable, it's a something you're going to have to buy and keep in stock and on hand for when you're using this machine. Um, you can get around the repeated expense of that particular part by building a jig that you mount your workpiece into and you just tape that little geared tooth to the bottom of the jig. So I'll probably be setting that up pretty quick here. In this case, I'm carving foam and just like the original carve rights, these things, uh, you know, tend to get gummed up if you have too much dust in there. So you got to be pretty careful about cleaning the machine out in between uses. Um, which, you know, fortunately you pop the lid open, you get in there with a, you know, compressed air nozzle and just blast all the dust out and you can make pretty quick work of cleaning out all of the uh, accumulated gunk that you get in the machine at the end of a carve. You know, sawdust is probably going to be a lot more forgiving than the pink foam um, because the pink foam picks up a static charge and starts to cling to everything on the inside of the machine. So that's going to build up a lot faster than normal sawdust. So once again, my name is Sean Thorson here at Thorson & Associates Workshop. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe and share this all over the place. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put a link somewhere that you can click on to get yourself this machine if you decide you want to try it out for yourself. Thanks a bunch and tune in next time.